lovely YouTube family, welcome back to Business Society. Today we're going to talk about one of the most famous retailers of all time. If you like the content of this video, remember to like, share, subscribe and hit that notification bell down below. Enjoy the video. The Rise GameStop is one of the few speciality retailers that has been able to weather the dot-com storm. It is also the only publicly traded billion-dollar retailer with physical stores that was founded in 1994. Amazon was founded in 1994 as well, but big box retailers, online or offline, have not been able to sell as many games as GameStop. During the first quarter, GameStop reported total global sales of $2 billion. This represented a 7% increase over the year ago period, which is notable considering that new software sales declined 20.4%. GameStop blamed this on the lack of AAA releases. On the upside, pre-owned slashed value software sales increased 5.3% year over year. So the fall. With more people stuck indoors and craving entertainment thanks to lockdowns across the country, you'd think the video game retailer GameStop would be thriving. But the coronavirus pandemic has decimated the already struggling chain. GameStop's core business is selling new and used software and hardware to video game enthusiasts. But the video game retail chain has fallen on hard times. Even before the coronavirus started, Gamers had already begun to shift from buying packaged software at brick and mortar stores to downloading games directly to their consoles. Apple and Amazon have shaken up the status quo too, attracting consumers with new streaming services that don't require physical consoles, making it easier than ever to game. It's been clear that the company has been having problems for a long time. There's been basically a 15-year trend away from packaged video game distribution to digital game distribution. GameStop has been feeling the pressure. In February 2002, GameStop went public on the New York Stock Exchange at $18 a share. And in 2004, Barnes Noble spun off its majority stake in the company for about $110 million. In 2005, GameStop acquired rival electronics boutique games for $1.4 billion, expanding its international footprint and making the company the world's largest video game retailer, with over 4,400 stores worldwide. On December 24, 2007, the stock closed at an all-time high of $63, more than double the amount from a year earlier and the company had a market cap of almost $10 billion, and its physical footprint kept growing. According to analysts, by the late 2010s, stores were also starting to feel worn and just generally tired. With consumers buying games digitally and signing up for subscription services, there's nothing really to trade in or resell. By 2012, GameStop had more than 6,600 stores in 15 separate countries, but the company wanted to diversify even more, and so it went on a buying spree. In 2013, GameStop acquired Simply Mac, the largest certified reseller of Apple products and Spring Mobile, the fastest growing AT&T authorized retailer of wireless services. In 2014, the company expanded its collectibles business, selling toys like the $1,400 Ghostbusters vehicle or the $500 Avengers Endgame Hulk statue. By 2018, GameStop opened more than 1,200 AT&T wireless stores. I think the things we've done to improve our performance is we've created two new billion dollar businesses inside our stores and those are digital and collectibles. And then outside our stores, we've got these great technology brands businesses, which is our AT&T and Apple partnerships. But even with all of the new acquisitions, by 2018 sales remained flat and the company was struggling to maintain customer loyalty. The market for physical games was declining too, with the advent of online services from Xbox, PlayStation and Nintendo which were offering downloadable digital versions of their games. 
In 2018, GameStop reported sales of pre-owned video products with $1.8 billion, 20% less than 2013. GameStop did not provide the figure for 2019, so GameStop had to pivot. In 2019, the company had collectible net sales of $737 million, almost 900% higher than 2014. As of August 2020, GameStop's market cap had fallen to about a half a billion dollars, and the company's stock price closed at $9 on October 2nd, 2020. COVID-19 has only added to the company's woes. In the second quarter of 2020, same-store sales fell by more than 12% from the prior year, with a majority of locations open to limited customer access or curbside delivery. But it isn't all bad news for GameStop. With stores shut down, its second quarter 2020 global online sales increased more than 800% from the prior year. In October 2020, GameStop entered into a multi-year agreement with Microsoft to expand its physical and digital video game options and to upgrade its stores. Now let's take a look at how GameStop rose again. Frenetic Options Trading a sea of shares sold short, chatroom range wars, pretty much everything with the potential to slingshot a stock into the stratosphere was at play in GameStop Corporation on Friday. GameStop is a true animal, said Steve Sosnick, chief strategist at Interactive Brokers. It's a rare convergence of a short squeeze combined with some fundamental news and an army of fast money traders. If any single fact explains the historics, it's this. GameStop's stock equals to 141% of its available shares has been borrowed and sold short. A bearish position showing mark-to-market losses of over $1.74 billion, according to data from financial analytics firm S3 Partners. A single share can be shorted multiple times, it is wise to remember. Gains beget gains when shorts are under that kind of pressure, forcing them to buy back stock as it rises. So what is actually moving this market? In the options market, where dealer hedging also has the potential to fuel rallies, a record 913,000 GameStop calls traded as of 3.43pm on Friday, as a showdown between short seller Citroen Research and hordes of Reddit day traders, ended with the stock soaring as much as 79%. A bullish GameStop contract with a strike price of $60 expiring Friday was the most actively traded option across exchanges, according to Bloomberg data, and it jumped 2,700% to roughly $1.97 from just $0.07 cents on Thursday. The GameStop frenzy comes after a Tuesday tweet by Citroen, in which the short seller wrote that buyers at these levels are the suckers at this poker game, that spurred a wave of backlash of the 1.9 million member strong Reddit forum r slash Wall Street bets, prompting Citroen managing partner Andrew Left to say Friday that the firm will stop commenting on the stock. Amid the battle, GameStop surged as much as 116% this week, with Friday's surge triggering a trading halt for the stock and marking its most volatile 10-day period on record. Shares have soared over 200% higher so far this month. Traders are also chasing those gains in the options market, according to International Group's Chris Murphy. It's an epic combination of retail traders chasing momentum on a highly shorted stock, said Murphy, the firm's co-head of derivative strategy. Those investors may be viewing the January $60 calls for a max loss of about $2 as a better way to express their opinion than buying the stock for $58. Well, that's it from this video, guys. How was this video? Did you like it? If yes, then hit that thumbs up and comment down below. Subscribe to this channel and also press the bell icon for more videos. See you in the next video.